History is littered with stories of heroes fighting monsters, villains, and in the process, becoming the bad guy themselves. So driven to defeat evil, they become evil. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Our hero may have good intentions, but ultimately his obsession with dealing out due punishment, and his refusal to think about what he's doing, twists him into a monster just as bad, or even worse, than the one he was hunting. This may have happened to the fitness YouTuber Richard Burgess, better known as Vegan Gains. The public's perception of Richard has deteriorated over time, and he has spent a lot of that time calling out another fitness YouTuber in Jason Blaha, making video after video after video on him, trying to defeat him. But in the process, he may have unwittingly turned into exactly what he's been fighting. Has Richard transformed into a sort of Jason Blaha clone? Well, let's find out. Jason Blaha has been a public figure for years now, so it's understandable he would have his fair share of haters. And of course, he brings a lot of the hate on himself. Guys who are veterans who are standing there still screaming about your valor, stolen valor, you know what, F it. And Vegan Gains is no different. Richard has been on YouTube a long time. His channel has been going for over six years so it's reasonable to assume he would have some haters as well. But he seems to have an extremely large percentage of his audience, not actually like him one bit. And just like Jason Blaha, Richard will regularly get plenty of dislikes on his videos. And just like Blaha, he brings a lot of the negative attention to his channel on himself. He has never claimed to be ex-CIA, or to have sniped a terrorist off a donkey like Jason has. But he has done other things that leave many who watch with a bad taste in their mouths. One thing that a lot of his audience find annoying about Richard is the condescending, childish voice he uses when speaking about someone he disagrees with. Oh my god, you guys, this is so homophobic. Oh my god, this offends me. I can't even think straight. I can't even come up with an argument because I'm so offended. Meal one, whey protein and a multivitamin. That's a feel really plants feel pain too what a concept oh thank you thank you god so much for vegan gain oh the little baby can't go vegan because he's still not done breastfeeding yet talking in a silly voice sometimes may not seem like a good enough reason for all the hate richard gets but he has been accused of more serious things Today, I wanted to share with you the truth about my dog. Lately, someone has been making a series of videos about how uh, me and Jasmine are abusing our dog, we're feeding it a vegan diet, it's incredibly unhealthy. Uh, right when we got Lucy, we fed her natural balanced vegan dog food formula, which- Many had accused Richard of making his dog ill through feeding it a vegan diet. And he was also criticised for getting the dog from a breeder. But Richard assured us that the woman he got the dog from was definitely not a breeder. So one of the lies being spread around was that I paid a breeder for the dog, I didn't adopt it, which isn't true. Sorry. We didn't buy the dog from a breeder. So we gave yeah, we still adopted Lucy. It's We didn't, pay, we didn't buy her from a breeder. And lying, uh, she ended up, she was in fact a breeder, we found out later. And he was also adamant that he didn't purchase the dog, he merely adopted her. But uh, we didn't pay her any money for the dog. Was. What we, we just covered some of the medical expenses, uh, so food, just basic stuff. Uh, the breeder gave us a crate, just stuff like that. We didn't actually pay for the dog. Um, overall, the dog was a net loss for the breeder. She lost money uh, raising Lucy, and we just covered some of the basic costs. Uh, that was part of the deal in the exchange for the dog, uh, so we didn't pay the breeder. I think I spent uh, close to a thousand dollars. You're an idiot! Whether Richard bought the dog or not wasn't really the main issue, though. The serious accusation was did he make the dog physically ill with the vegan diet. 
But what about the dog's mental health while under Richard's care? Really bad anxiety issues, and uh, it progressively got worse. Uh, it has nothing to do with the whole vegan diet. She was doing perfectly fine on her vegan diet. So the dog's anxiety wasn't caused by the vegan diet. If it wasn't the diet, then what? I have really bad anger problems, and what was happening was I'd just get insanely angry, I'd yell, uh, maybe sometimes throw a few things, uh, not at the dog, but just throw something at the wall, shit like that, and the dog would get scared. Um, that's not technically abusing the dog because I'm not attacking the dog. Uh, she was just getting scared, but I've been seeing a therapist, and I've had a really good breakthrough with my anger issues. I made a video about this. And uh, the dog and Jasmine have been a lot happier around me, and uh, yeah, the dog isn't getting abused. And she really loves me. Uh, we walk every day, she cuddles with me, I give her tummy rubs. Uh, everything's good. It appeared as though Richard's anger was the cause of the dog's anxiety. But Richard didn't see it that way. He had a very different explanation. What happened was, uh, just a short time after we first got her, she had a traumatic incident on the subway. Jasmine took Lucy to the vet, you know, for a normal checkup when she was still just a little puppy, a few months old. Uh, Jasmine went to the vet, and then when she was coming back home, she hopped on the subway. And on the subway, there was a gang of Muslim men there were about 15 of them on the car with Jasmine and Lucy, and they started acting really fucking aggressive and hostile to Jasmine and Lucy. Uh, they were yelling, some of them were shoving Jasmine, uh, they were talking to each other in like Arabic or something. I think it was an Asian gang or something. I saw someone, he looked Asian, and he was speaking another language. I'm pretty sure it was Asian. <laughs> Richard, though, must have really cared for the dog, because, unbelievably, he went against his strict vegan principles. And we figured out a way to settle her stomach, and it's a combination of a very specific brand of dog food and a combination of raw meat. Now, neither of those things are vegan, but the thing is, if we just passed the dog on to someone else, just gave away the dog, they'd have to do the exact same thing. So. It may seem a little hypocritical for Richard to criticize others for the purchase and consumption of meat, and then to go out and buy meat himself. A pet, though, is part of the family. You would do anything for them, and he clearly must have loved that dog more than anything to go against his vegan principles. So, how's the dog doing now? Uh, we adopted her out to a different family, so she's not living with us anymore. Richard likes to speak in that silly voice when talking about people he deems not as smart as he is, and he's never made a video on someone where he didn't believe he was smarter than that person. Being a vegan, he is against animal cruelty of course, so then it's very odd that he didn't realise that forcing a dog to eat a vegan diet when he first got it could possibly harm it. Perhaps he was too blinded by his vegan cause, I know he said he gave it meat eventually, but perhaps that was too late. Of course, he would never intentionally hurt the dog. But maybe with the diet, and definitely with the temper tantrums, he did harm it. If he did hurt the dog, then it would just have been an accident. A silly one, but still an accident. It's not like he made a conscious decision to do the wrong thing. You'd know that my grandfather recently died of a heart attack, and uh, I just got back from the funeral thing that we had. It wasn't exactly a funeral, but a bunch of family got together and I was dragged to it. But anyway, um, I was planning on showing you guys footage of my grandfather actually having the heart attack. Um, as soon as the paramedics got to the house, I took out my camera and started filming. But um, a bunch of people in my family, my mom, my grandmother, uncles, sh that they threw a big fit about me showing that footage on YouTube. To some, that must have seemed pretty cold and callous, but I'm sure Richard actually does miss his granddad. 
And uh, don't bother writing in the comments section saying that you're sorry that my grandfather passed away. Um, I can handle people dying pretty easily and I'm pretty neutral about the whole situation. So don't bother saying anything like that. Um, and this isn't really going to affect any kind of video production at all. Uh, things are going to go along as planned. Maybe this apparent cold heartedness was just a one off. And maybe Richard wasn't always so insensitive when it came to people dying. So blah blah blah, cancer is an almighty killer and I wish there was a cure for it. I for one will be supporting Team Lewis in the future and hope you guys will too. One day, cancer will be a thing of the past and the memory of Lewis will live on in the cure when it's found. Richard got a lot of hate for this video. Some claimed he was mocking the child with cancer, but according to him, he wasn't. And maybe he's right, maybe he wasn't mocking the child who died. But he still included the child in a video where he did his condescending voice and mocked Eddie Hall, who was just making a post about a fan of his that sadly passed away. Not everyone who watched the video thought he did anything wrong, of course. Richard then made another video where he tried to explain why he made the original one in the first place. But judging by the dislikes it got, the majority seemed to think the whole thing was just made in poor taste. It's not the first video Richard has made on Eddie Hall either, and Eddie has actually commented on one of Richard's videos, letting him know what a horrible person he thought he was. And what was Richard's response to Eddie Hall? Like Eddie, the way this comment is worded, it sounds like you want to fight me. So why wouldn't you have just said that? Even if you were worried about YouTube's terms of service, you could have just emailed me, messaged me, challenging me to a fight. You did that with Thor. You're going to have a boxing match with Thor. So why are you so afraid of me, Eddie? I, I think we both know the answer to that. It's because I would kick your ass. Sure, you're bigger and stronger than me, but that wouldn't really help you much in a boxing ring, would it? I'd like to think Richard didn't actually mock Eddie's young fan who died of cancer. I'm sure Richard wouldn't make a video where he mocked a dead child. Surely no one could hate children that much. I f hate children. They literally make me sick. When I see babies in a commercial, I start to gag and almost throw up and I have to look away and mute it. And when I see babies in a stroller, especially when they're crying, I just want to put my foot through the f thing and step on it until it's nothing but blood and pulp on the f pavement. Okay, so he doesn't like children, but I'm sure Richard still wouldn't mock someone with cancer. No one would be that heartless. What's up, family? What's up, Team Furious? Um, I just finished my first week of chemotherapy. Now, I know that this is a touchy subject, especially for those of you who are Furious Pete fans, but I don't care. He eats a ton of meat. He eats I want to point out something. I want you to look in my eyes right now. I am not scared. I am not scared of this. I am not. Because I'm going to beat this once and for all. Pete, you're terrified of dying. You've bawled your eyes out crying in your other cancer update videos. And the only way you can cope with this fear of dying is by trying to convince yourself that, oh yeah, no matter what, I'll pull through. Well, you're a pussy. Richard also gets a lot of dislikes on his debates. And Richard really does love to debate. If uh, all of my research is bad, if I don't know what I'm talking about, you're so much smarter than me. Well, let's have a live debate. Uh, we can settle all of this in a live debate format. We can discuss uh, nutrition, health, the environment, vegan ethics. Contact me on Twitter. I'd be more than happy to, to debate anyone on this issue. I'll debate anyone on the ethical principles of veganism and other related subtopics, including issues like this. If you can uh, compare vegan phobia to homophobia, racism, I don't care. A debate is fine. In fact, they can even be quite entertaining. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. But when Richard has a debate, 
Well. So I think that also is important how you just perceive things. Uh, is very biased and skewed and retarded. Okay, yeah, uh, thanks a lot for that introduction to um, bring back racist ideologies. No, uh, no I'm not saying... No, but so if, I'm no, just saying, I if think you're, you're going to... No, but if you're going to bring no, up an no, open okay, statement... No, no, okay, so here's the thing. I think just on the conclusion on the so, study, if, if you no. agree with the point... No, hold on a second. No, I, I think that you uh, said again, yourself finding, five minutes ago. Hold on a second, hold so on a second. You listen, said five minutes ago. So, listen, listen... Listen, uh, but I'm not worried about that study because it's got so few sample sizes. Like, it's the you, same, you said about the wider, the same you study. The wider, it, you're still talking about 21 people. Yeah, okay, that do is, you know what sample size means? Yeah, so, so I think, I think well, that is significant. Wait, 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 so, wait, that's not what I said. I so, share the screen right, with you, so but let me get this straight. nobody so else can one see. So, in each, so yeah, table uh, one. Already, like it's, it's been a circus show the last 10 minutes, honestly. <laughs> like It's been the most frustrating live stream I've ever been on in my life. Okay, well, the fact is, the study... Another problem some have with Richard is that he's just far too overly aggressive. Usually when it comes to anyone eating meat, but a lot of the time he's just angry in general. F***ing lying c like you create. So f you, you lying b I would like to make a book titled Breaking a Dumb Bitch You, you stupid, ignorant, selfish bitch. You said yourself you had orthorexia. What the f***? Does veganism have to do with that? And when he's not shouting and being aggressive, he can often act quite scary. Really important for me, not only becoming vegan, but just becoming a better person and not becoming a crazy, insane serial killer because that's the road I was really going down. So in other words, if I were to cut the skin off of your bald f head, put it in a pan, fry it in butter and eat it, at I'm just this ticking time bomb, serial killer, crazy f Psychopath. Cut the skin. Cut the skin. It's actually her commenting, Great vid, as always. I hate you even more. I just really wish I could make you suffer. Like, not even as bad as the animals you eat. I want you to suffer more than any living thing has ever suffered on the planet. And I'll be dead serious. I'm a sadist. I enjoy hurting people. Uh, when I just beat the ever-living sh** out of somebody, I get a warm, tingly feeling inside like I'm being loved. Sion's a little f bitch. If I had the opportunity, I'd kill him. Slit his f throat with this knife. Really like to use this knife on him. Like, he really does deserve to die. Like, he's such a smug little b Like, love to just slide a knife right across his throat and just watch him, like, just look all scared. When, you know, he's just done. Gains here, and this will be my last video. It's all come to this. And tomorrow will be the day of retribution. Uh, tomorrow will be the day I finally get revenge against humanity. I don't know why you just can't realize that you're causing the suffering and death of animals, but it's a crime, and you're all going to pay for it. So, Jason and Richard may not be disliked for the same reasons, but they are both disliked immensely. Of course, they have their fans as well, but the fact that so many people who click on their videos watch them just to hate on them rather than enjoy their content make Richard and Jason pretty similar. The internet is full of fake tough guys. Jason Blaha believes himself to be a real one, of course. And when he bit my arm, I hooked my fingers in his cheek, which will generally paralyze somebody. You can hook him like a fish. And I put him chest down on the floor and I held him there. The he's openly threatened veterans to just come fight him. And he's clearly not an intimidating person. He's not a real tough guy. It's not... But Blaha is not alone in thinking he's a bit of a tough guy. Vegan Gaines would also consider himself to be just that. Despite Richard hating violence towards animals, he never seems shy about trying to hurt human beings. Yeah, again, um... I'll fight you. Like, I'm serious. Uh, I have enough money saved up to fly to whatever part of the world you're f from and go to an MMA gym and uh, beat the f you in a cage, I'll do it. Why don't we just have a cage match and uh, settle things that way? 
Um, I would absolutely beat his ass. I would Mike Tyson him to the fuck ground. And uh, we can have an MMA match. We can do it perfectly legally so neither of us gets in trouble with the law. Or, you know, if you want me to fly out to you, I'd be perfectly willing to have a boxing match or an MMA match where I could be beat your face in. You want to prove it? Well, then fight me in a cage. So, uh, open invitation anytime. I'll, uh, we'll set up an MMA match. You can either come here, I can come to you, whatever. I really don't like him. And I'd really like to to fight him in a cage. You know, legally, of course. Oh, y you want an MMA match? I'd love to uh, fight John Venus and uh, put my elbow through his head. I would crush you so goddamn easily. It wouldn't even be funny. I think I could literally rip your arms out of their socket like a f gorilla. If you're ever in Toronto, uh, like, uh, let's, let's set up a fight. You know what, if, if Blaha wants to come up to Toronto, you know, we can set up a, an MMA match. If you want to see if I can feel guilt or not, like, let's go in a cage. Let's settle this in an MMA match. Look, literally, I'm not even kidding. I'll do an MMA or boxing match with you with one hand tied behind my back. Oh. Is, is that a challenge for a, a cage match? Settle this in a cage, huh? Why don't we have an MMA match? I've saved up plenty of air miles on my credit card. I, so why don't we set up a, a boxing or MMA match and you can prove how much bigger, stronger, faster you are than all these vegan athletes, including me? I actually remember I challenged you to a boxing match like a couple years ago. If you want to embarrass yourself uh, any further, I'd be more than happy to beat your face into the ground in, a, in an MMA match, it'd be great. For years and years now, Richard has been offering to fight people. However, not once has a fight ever happened. Yet, he still challenges people, knowing it'll never happen. Or will it? Isaac Butterfield is a popular YouTuber that Richard really doesn't like. And Isaac doesn't seem to be a fan of Richard's either. Anyway, this absolute sloppy turd has more than a few screws loose. And he so, as is the norm when Richard doesn't like someone, he offered Isaac to a fight, and Isaac accepted. Finally, someone had accepted Richard's offer. Finally, Richard would have to follow through with one of his challenges. Uh, unfortunately, there have been some events in my life and some world events that have uh, made an MMA match difficult. For one thing, I tore my uh, quadriceps muscle a while ago, making it hard to even freaking walk. And uh, lately, there's the coronavirus, so I can't even train, I can't travel, so... Pussy! Yes, sadly, just as it looked like Richard was finally going to have to follow through with one of his challenges, he didn't. Yet, despite not fighting Isaac, Richard will still challenge people to fight to this day. But by now, it's almost like the boy who cried wolf. At first, when he would challenge people to a fight, it would cause a bit of excitement. Would they fight? Who would win? Where would it take place? But now we know they will never fight, no one will win, and it'll take place nowhere. So, Richard acting like a tough guy in front of the camera is very, very Jason Blaha. And Richard has issued many challenges to Jason before. But it never seemed like it was ever really going to happen. After all, Jason is notoriously difficult to negotiate with. Non-negotiable. We all know Jason likes a bit of YouTube drama. A bit of beef. Uh, Cali Muscle actually threatened me. And we're about to find out just how stupid and ignorant he actually is. So let me put on Jason will upload multiple videos a day, and it's not easy trying to think of new content to create. I need about two of these at least first thing in the morning to get myself going. But what is easy is talking about how you don't like someone. And Jason isn't the only one who has discovered an easy way to pull in views. Richard's channel at one stage felt like it was all about drama. Lots of channels do this, but what people had an issue with Richard doing it is the number of times he would criticize other channels for trying to create beef just to get views and then appear to do it himself. I think you're a whiny crybaby, I think you're a phony, and I think you create fake outrage because you have no other way of producing content on your sh 
YouTube channel. Offer because you know you're a moron. This is why you did all of this. Uh, you know, dug up dirt to slander me, uh, made up a bunch of lies. Because you're a dumb dumb, you can't actually- You are illiterate and you literally can't read or you are lying. Uh, I've proven so that not only are you wrong, but you are a dishonest cherry picking liar. Pointing out how ignorant and stupid you are if that wasn't already immediately apparent. Man, you're not as athletic as me. I'm in better overall shape. Sure, in some lifts you can lift more, but that doesn't really mean anything. You have absolutely no martial arts experience, whereas I have trained a bit in martial arts. So, no, I'd be able to easily kick your ass block. I, I can see why you would get absolutely destroyed in a live debate against me. You are a lying moron. Richard doesn't ever seem to have beef with small channels, though. Phew! He only ever seems to have an issue with the big channels, which reinforces people's claims that he only creates fake beef to get attention and views. Imagine making a video about someone more well known than you just to get attention. And when all his name calling has worked and someone makes a video on him, he's got exactly what he wanted. He has gotten content for the foreseeable future and now he can go back and forth with whatever channel. Although when Richard isn't challenging them to a fight or using a silly voice and tries to win the back and forth, he doesn't seem to do as well as he thinks a lot of the time. He even says, and I'm quoting him, you, ha you just have to know what foods to eat. Another quote, you do have to be more diligent. Did he not just argue for me? And okay, so Greg is just misquoting me. I don't know if he's doing this deliberately, but this is what I actually said in my video. You just have to know what foods to eat. You do have to be more diligent about what you eat. Greg is a liar. He lied about everything. But no, Greg, you're lying. After a while of Richard trying to bait people into making videos on him, people started to catch on to what Richard was doing and just couldn't be bothered to deal with him anymore. And I actually tried to set up a debate with the beast here, so I tweeted at him, I said, I don't know if you noticed my other tweets, but I'd like to debate slash discuss veganism and vegan activism with you. You made a video about how it's wrong to compare vegan phobia to racism and homoph homophobia, and as a black vegan, I'd like to share my perspective with you. He said, I'm good man. Very vague response. So I said, uh, what do you mean? Are you going to debate me or not? Then he said, I am not. That's funny coming from someone who was so emotional and acted like he cared so much about this topic. So then I responded, funny how you claim to feel so strongly on a topic, but when someone challenges your ideas, you just hide. Did you just fake your outrage about that vegan teacher for views, or are you just scared of being embarrassed in front of a live audience? He responded by saying both. So he's trying to make it look here as though he doesn't care and he's basically just being facetious, but no, he's actually answering honestly. Not only is he a big phony and he just fakes outrage on his YouTube channel to get more views, but his position is completely indefensible and if he were to get into a debate with me, he'd absolutely embarrass himself and he's afraid of being embarrassed. So no, he's actually answering honestly, he knows he's a liar and he knows he's a moron. And then I pointed out, funny how you nearly started crying because an old lady said vegan phobia is similar to homophobia and racism, but you're fine with slitting animals' throats open, it's no wonder you're running away from a debate with me, your beliefs are ridiculous and indefensible. And he admitted, sounds about right. Hey, Pete. Hey, Pete. Pete. Hey, Pete. Yeah, he won't say hi. Um, I've proven that not only are you wrong, but you are a dishonest cherry-picking liar. And I also noticed that you ignored uh, my challenge for a live debate. Uh, I, I... Of course, Richard disagrees with people who claim he fakes outrage and tries to cause beef just for the exposure. And if Joe disagrees with any of the information I've provided in this video or any of my arguments here, I'd be more than happy to debate Joe. I could go on his podcast. But, um, if Joe wants to have me on, I'd be more than happy to. Um, I'd be fine debating him on any platform. I don't have to go on his podcast. He can come on my channel, do a live stream with me. I'd, I'd be fine with that. Would you, Richard? Would you be fine with Joe Rogan coming on your channel? And when Richard can't find any beef online, he will look for it in real life. 
did a video where I mentioned that I had a less than cordial encounter with a couple of breeders because their one-year-old son was screaming at the top of his lungs in a restaurant and they were being extremely annoying and disruptive. Well, the mother of that child left a comment answering back, so I figured I'd uh, read through this and give my own response. Lol, that was me and my family who you weirdos had a problem with in that restaurant. Okay, first problem here, weirdos? <laughs> weirdos? Weirdos? Speaking of weird, look at your youngest son. I'm not a fan of babies to begin with, but that's honestly one of the ugliest babies I've ever seen. But at least that little shit was quiet. Yeah, my one-year-old was being loud, laughing and yelling and being excited. True, but he wasn't screaming at the top of his lungs like you two are making up. You're a lying your child was screaming, he wasn't laughing and acting excited, he was just screaming, and you have to make up bull lies and excuses to try to hide the fact that you're a bad parent. Your kid kept screaming because he thinks you're a joke, and I have seen literal bitches discipline their children and raise their kids better than you. If you're worse at raising kids than an actual bitch, guess what that makes you? You're a you're a as well as Jasmine saying she politely came up to us, she was rude saying she was literally going deaf. Uh, yeah, she was sitting almost right next to your screaming kid and her ears were actually hurting having to listen to that crap. Like, what, is she not allowed to tell you how much something is bothering her? Is it rude to state facts? Oh, I, I guess me calling you a lying is rude then. So, yes. My husband and I were rude back. Okay, well, at least you admit to being a Mind you, my husband would have never been rude to a woman, but he legit thought Jasmine was a man. I see, so your husband has trouble telling the difference between men and women. I think that says a lot more about you than it does about my wife. Does he just have a thing for strong chins? I guess that comes in handy when you're boxing. Or, you know, if you want me to fly out to you, I'd be perfectly willing to have a boxing match. Wait, is that a man or a woman? I also have a hard time believing that your husband would never be rude to someone just because they're a woman. He's Muslim, isn't he? But he looks Asian! And when you ask my husband to go outside, a man with two babies and a wife with him, we were laughing at you. Okay, so why was a husband with a wife and two babies with him screaming at my wife. It seemed like he wanted to settle his disagreement with us with violence. Isn't that something he learned from his religion? Asian. So I offered to fight him outside That's and cool. have a nice house, not a sh dirty shoebox apartment filled with animals, nice cars, we can afford it, but thanks for your concern. Okay, I probably make at least as much money as either of you, so I don't know what you're bragging about here. Also, my video on not having children wasn't directed specifically at you. I'm not surprised that a self-entitled like you would think you're always the center of attention. Whoa, whoa. We are very happy. Oh, so your husband only yells at other women? I hope you didn't get jealous that he was treating my wife special. I've been a professional athlete, traveled the world, done a ton of great things in my life, and hands down, my children have been the best thing I've ever experienced. I don't f***ing care, you stupid Funny how your children are just the most wonderful thing that ever happened to you, yet you still don't know how to raise them. People ought to be good at things they have a strong interest in. And we figured out a way to settle her stomach, and it's a combination of a very specific brand of dog food and a combination of raw meat. But you must be retarded. Maybe it's from all the boxing. Who are you guys to tell people what to do? Well, stick to making vegan videos, because outside of that, you sound like an idiot. Okay, retarded, maybe all you hear is buzzing in your ears from all the hits to the head you've taken, but I didn't tell anyone to do anything. This dumb 
claims to be educated, and here she is using childish insults. No one cares what you think. Uh, looks like your second child inherited more of your stupid. Anyways, no hard feelings, lol, good day. It's funny how you try to pretend that you're so happy and educated and successful and rich when you actually spent time out of your day to write this crap. Whoa, whoa. And Robin, again, if your husband wants to fight me, I'm down anytime. We can find an MMA gym, sign some waivers, do it legally. I can even fight you if you want. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. Also, check out the Vegan Gain store for some merch. You might find something you like. And as always, keep making those vegan and childless gains. So does Richard still look for beef these days anywhere he can? Well, yes he does. Richard has done workout advice and diet advice in the past, but after years and years on being on YouTube, what other workout or diet advice could he give? He would just end up repeating himself. He needs to make more content for his channel of course, but if he didn't criticise other channels for creating beef just for views, perhaps a lot of his audience may have been more forgiving. So fake beef or real beef, it doesn't matter. What matters is, Jason Blaha loves a bit of beef, and so does Richard. Jason and Richard seem to have plenty of things in common, and one major thing they have in common is their hatred for one another. They go tit for tat, back and forth. He's lying about the content in my video. So this is a typical manipulation tactic of Blaha. Uh, and now we've got Richard, AKA Vegan Gains, who is claiming that I'm on trend and have no gains. Blaha lives in Texas. He's not well liked for a number of reasons, but especially the stolen valor. Anorexia isn't socially acceptable. I can think of at least one major vegan YouTuber who is borderline anorexic. And Jason Blaha is such a pussycat that not only is he afraid of physical confrontation, he's also afraid of intellectual confrontation. I've challenged him to an online debate before. Vegan Gains, aka Richard, has chimed in once again upon me in a cage match or a fight with someone else and it's like, well, why? Yeah, so I think Blaha is a little jealous that I'm benching more than him now, but what can I say? The vegan gains are real, I'm not on steroids. It shows the level of absurdity that Richard has, um, and it, it shows, quite frankly, his detachment from reality. You are just a sad, lonely person who is dissatisfied with the course your life has taken, and it's all your fault, and your lies have only made it worse. And before I go, there's just one last thing I would like to say to Vegan Gaines. Richard. I am your father. They both just wait for the other to mess up in some way. And luckily for Blaha, he never has to wait too long. Uh, but as you could see from the video footage, uh, it was a pretty bad boo-boo that was by far the worst injury I've ever had while training, and I was in so much pain uh, that I couldn't get up and walk, so I had to call the paramedics to wheel me to the hospital. So why did this injury happen? Well, it's quite obvious. I'm vegan. And I take steroids, or at least that's what Secret Agent Blaha, aka our boy Hemingway, thinks. So Jason Blaha recently made a video on uh, the injury that I recently had. And he tore an adductor while squatting. I think a lot of you know where I'm going to go with this. Um, I don't particularly like Richard. I'm not going to be overly mean about this. There's some, some bad blood between us. And he probably really doesn't know how to train. Probably has no idea. Um, I've never seen anything that would suggest that he knows anything about programming or fatigue management. Blaha tried to contain his glee, but it was clear he was enjoying it all. Vegan Gains, after giving years of advice and telling everyone who would listen that Jason Blaha was wrong, and you shouldn't train like Jason says, you should train how he says, injured himself while training. But of course, that didn't really mean Richard's way of training was wrong. Anyone can injure themselves once. You have just injured yourself the once, right Richard?
It's been a while since I uploaded a workout video, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to go to the gym all that consistently because of a few reoccurring injuries, especially in my lower back. And uh, speaking of injuries, I got a not so good injury today, but you know, we'll get to that later. It felt like my shoulders almost dislocated. I'm not going to be adding weight for a while, even though this didn't feel that heavy. Um, I did injure myself. I got injured pretty badly while training about a week ago, and I'm still not sure about the full extent of my injuries, but it's looking like I tore my adductor on my left leg, and I might also have a hernia. Well, I pulled my right pectoral, and I heard a popping noise, so that's also not too good. Um, a few months ago, I tore my quad. It was on the leg press. It wasn't even lifting uh, like too heavy. Getting on the bench and getting up from the bench, I'm getting disoriented, I'm losing my sense of balance, and getting that feeling of vertigo. And body workout I did, I didn't get to finish because I pulled my pec. I wouldn't want to be injured every other workout, so I know who I'd rather take online coaching from. And they both do online coaching. But Richard doesn't seem to enjoy it, and only does it for the money. Richard may injure himself way more than Blaha, but don't let that fool you, he is still much, much smarter than Jason. Hi everyone, so as I'm sure most of you are already aware, Jason Blaha tried to capitalize on a recent injury I had by making a video about it. He tried to slander me, he claimed that my injury was due to my vegan diet, and he was trying to bait me into making a response video to him, thinking that if I made a response to him, you know, that would drive some extra traffic over his channel, he'd get some money from the views, and he might even get a few extra online coaching clients out of it. Well, that whole plan backfired. I did make a response video like he was hoping for, but it wasn't the video that he wanted me to make. And when Richard isn't outsmarting Jason by doing exactly what he wants, he will just be up to his old tricks again. I could fly out to Texas, no problem. We can find an MMA gym and have a nice clean fight. All I'm doing is challenging you to a martial arts competition, okay? You can accept or decline, okay? It's just a challenge. This is no different than me challenging you to a game of basketball. So, if you're so much stronger, so much more athletic, there's no way I can hang with you. And if you're such a badass, if you're this mercenary black belt, you're a troll hunter, you, you're not afraid of blowing somebody's head off in a parking lot, then what are you scared of, huh, Jason? What's the problem with fighting me in a cage? Oh, maybe it's because you're not a mercenary, you're a fake mercenary, you don't have a black belt, you're not a badass, you've never killed anybody, you're just a fake tough guy on wine, and when someone actually challenges you to a fight, you're too scared, so you, you just put a copyright claim on your channel and report them to YouTube, because you're too scared. It's Richard even likes to dress up as Jason and mock him. Code name Hemingway. He comes from an elite military family and was raised to be a contract killer. Trained by the CIA and Green Berets, let's just say you don't want to be staring down the barrel of his rifle. You also forgot to mention that I'm actually bigger and stronger than Cali Muscle. Oh, Mount Bacephius. Well, you know what? I really don't care if any of you believe I'm a mercenary or not. But if you still have a problem with that, if you still want to fight, well, you better not be some punk. Because I have two black belts, and I've been trained to fight to the death. And I sure as hell ain't gonna be the one going into the ground. A quality impression of Blaha there, no doubt. But it also reminded me of someone else. Oh, Mount Bacephius. Maybe it's hate, maybe it's jealousy, who knows. But whatever it is, there is something about Blaha which gets Richard all confused. I never mentioned anything about you being a fake mercenary. He literally wanted people to believe that he was some kind of ex-super spy mercenary. Well, Jason, I didn't realize that you had mind reading powers. Was that something that you learned at the CIA? And Richard likes to pretend he doesn't care about Jason and that he wants him gone from YouTube forever. Help spread this video and, you know, get it seen far and wide so that we can finally finish Blaha forever. If you can't make any money off of YouTube, you can't make any money off of online coaching clients, 
then he's literally just going to have to live off of welfare from now on. He's not going to be, be able to make any money. He's but if Blaha did stop YouTube, what would Richard do without him? Richard has made so much money off the back of his little feud with Jason. No, Richard needs Jason, and he knows it. What would I do without you? No. No, you. You complete me. They may dislike each other, but they need each other. The videos they've made all about the beef between them have gained them plenty of views and plenty of money. So they can act like they hate each other all they want, but they depend on each other. And their hate for each other is what makes them very, very similar. Jason Blaha is a lol cow. In fact, he is the definition of one. And so is Vegan Gains. He too is a lol cow. Oops, I mean lol substitute. That joke was brought to you by Jimmy Bunker. Thanks, Jimmy! They both didn't start out as lol cows. They both started out wanting to make a fitness channel to help inform and educate others. They would even both call out fake natties. Me and Panda, and I called him out for being a fake natty, and of course I can't let his butt buddy, Olysis Jr., get off easy. So allow me to explain in detail why he's completely full of shit, and before any of you Olysis fanboys start calling me a jealous hater, I'll ask you to please stop playing with your Pokemon and pay close attention to this video, because I'm about to drop some truth bombs that just might ruin your childhood. One prime example of the lol cow is being funny without meaning to be. I wanted to make this video right now because, uh, because, what the fuck was I talking about? But you're still at fucking high risk of heart disease. Fucking. Another example of a lol cow is being cringy. Or maybe we could even just arm wrestle if uh, that that's a little too scary for you. So uh, you think you can take me in an arm wrestling match, Frank? I don't fucking think so. Not with these pipes. Did you see how far I threw that rock? Another trope of the lol cow is allowing others' comments to get to you and reacting. If you give a hater or a troll a reaction, they've got you and they've won. Okay, cool. Uh, you're banned. See you later. Anybody else want to call me fat or I'm looking chubby? Anyone else want to get f and a Guess what? If I want to look a certain way, I can f Look a certain way. Suck my f If you want to see rip f abs, then go on f up. So f annoying. Richard didn't like being called fat there. He knows how it makes him feel when he gets called that name, so he wouldn't call anyone else that name, right? Why don't you lose some weight, you fat piece of sh? Another trope of the lol cow is a sense of moral superiority. Believing you are better than everyone else. He's making up lies about me just to make me out to be a bad person because he knows he cannot, uh, he cannot criticize me on an intellectual level. Jason, I am morally superior to you. So, uh, hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Everyone's a Moron But Me. Because everyone just acts like a stupid, ignorant, apathetic, greedy child. It, since most bodybuilders don't know anything about training or new- Yeah, maybe I should challenge God to a cage match, see if he accepts. If he's all powerful, then clearly he'd fight me in a cage because he'd win. So if he's not all powerful, obviously he's gonna be a little fuck so and not fight me, so... Yeah, maybe I should just challenge God to a cage match, and if he doesn't show up, then I think that proves that, uh... I'm more powerful than your God. And Richard does things he wouldn't do if he didn't have a YouTube channel. He, just like a lot of lol cows, appears to have become desperate for attention and will happily degrade himself for views. <laughs> Richard's channel has become a lot about making him react, whether it's by calling him fat, or just trying to wind him up in some other way. The goal of the troll or hater is to make you react, remember? And just like a good lol cow, he falls for it every time. Yeah, call me a fat slob all you want, you won't fight me, will you pussy? Like, dude, 
If I'm such a soy boy, fight me in a cage. Oh, because he always reacts to whatever I post. It's really good. He must be just waiting for something to happen. Bro, fight me in a cage. You're the embarrassment. You wanna, you wanna see embarrassing? Fight me in a cage, bro. If you think I'm such a soy boy, then let's settle all, all of this in a boxing ring. I might think I look amazing. If I feel like if I'm in depressed in a really bad mood, I think I look fat. And then when I look at some of the comments, uh, that can really f with my head. So Richard may not have started out as a lol cow, but over time he has morphed into the very thing he used to mock, a lol cow, just like Jason Blaha. Along with the big things, there are a ton of smaller things that Richard and Jason have in common. They've both been married. They both believe in aliens. They've both been vegan. And I know that I have a lot of you who follow veganism and I was a vegan for a little while. They've both suffered from mental health issues. I've never trained this consistently ever in my life because of my issues with depression. I'd lift for a few months, then I'd get depressed, not do anything, get back into training, get depressed, and now, even when I get super, super depressed, um... For a decade ago, when I was rethinking some aspects of my life, I had a shotgun barrel in my mouth and had to sit there and weigh out if I was going to pull the trigger or not. Why don't we set up an MMA match? I'm out of shape, I get injured easily, I'm depressed. Uh, obviously, you'd be able to fight me in an MMA match, right, Frank? So yeah, I'm a little bit f up. I'm a little bit crazy. They both like to dress up. They both like to play with guns. 2017, I'm gonna do some amazing things. It'll make me be remembered forever. People will speak of me for thousands of years to come. <sighs> I'm a gun nerd. But yeah, I mean, talking about fake bullets or whatever acting. I look like fake bullets coming out. That looked like a fake bullet coming out. There you go. Ignorance might not only give you heart disease, but it might also get you shot. Well, what if I took a gun, pointed it at your son's head, pulled the trigger, and then turned around and told you, plants feel pain too? Her name is Vivian. Why'd I give it a woman's name? Because I love guns. I love guns almost as much as I love pussy. Pussy's the thing I love most in the world. But I love guns almost as much. How would you like to be a part of a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial to determine, once and for all, whether or not bullets to the head kill people? Doom, doom, doom. You know what it is. Doom, doom, doom. Glock City, 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 10, 10, 10, 10, 40s and then 45s, bitch. Oh. There are fatty streaks that develop inside the arterial wall, and they are, in all likelihood, what will kill you. They love a good bicep shot. All of us adults are busy making vegan gains. Both their physiques seem to have gotten worse over time. Both of them are disliked by the Delray misfits. Vegan gains. I like to piggyback with my fellow misfit partner in arms, Lord Vader, Jason Genova, reiterated. You are absolutely absurd. You know, animal protein, flesh, you refuse to eat and you're touting the benefits of that? You're very misguided. Do you understand if you simply added a pound of steak a day, a flank steak, the improvements you would make mentally as well as physically? And let's talk mental. You're sitting there with a comic book images behind you. Total fantasy is where you're at. I mean, I liked the old Spider-Man back in the day when I was a kid, when I was a cookie cutter kid. What the hell is wrong with you? One day Canada is going to be invaded. And what are you going to do when things come back full circle and you're stuffing edamame and tofu down your throat when savages enter? And like I said, the world of Mad Max could be coming around very soon. Quite honestly, your aggressiveness sucks for a young kid. You have no fight in you. Vegan gangs, this is for you, bro. I'm calling you out tonight. Vegan gangs. You know what, vegan gangs? All you do is eat vegetarian food. Why eat that stupid tofu sh? That stupid tofu sh? Almonds and sh? Like that. I'm calling you out, vegan gangs. 
vegan gains. You eat tofu and almonds and all that gay shit. A carnivore, you eat that stupid tofu shit. Vegan gains. You are such a freaking vegan, bro. This is a rare occurrence for me taking the time for a nobody. Um, a Jason. Jason Bloho, I believe it is. Order 66 Jason Blaha. Jason Blaha is getting Order 66 Bloho. Order 66 Jason Bloho. Jason Blaha, you've been Order 66 for, for the 10th time. You ugly physique man, you, you hairy ape man. All right, Order 66 Jason Blaha. All right, peace out, bud. They both have an OnlyFans account. Oh, no, wait, that's just Richard. Richard's wife started an OnlyFans account, and it wasn't long before Richard got in on the action. Check out my wife on OnlyFans, she does full nude, she's hot as hell, so if you're into that sort of thing, check out her OnlyFans, and of course, check out my OnlyFans, so if you want to see me naked, see my pee-pee, check out my OnlyFans. been <laughs> doing on cam for OnlyFans is necessarily that easy. Some, some hard stuff happened in there. The Easter, I'm trying not to be judgmental here. I'm trying to be open-minded. But there are limits to how open I am willing to be. Woo! What? Sadly, I can't afford to buy Richard's OnlyFans, but other people can. Oh my God! There's his dick. Okay, so Richard is the only one who shows his PP for money. But apart from that, these two are very, very similar. It's as if they're the same person, or at least twins. Not identical, of course. Jason is much better looking. I'll fight you. Like, I'm serious. Uh, I have enough money saved up to fly to whatever part of the world you're f from and go to an MMA gym and uh, beat the f of you in a cage. So, there we have it. Richard has spent years and years, video after video on Jason Blaha, trying to take him down trying to get one over on him, trying to win this little YouTube feud. But in the end, he is basically him. Richard Burgess is scarily similar to Jason Blaha. Richard may think he's nothing like Jason, and that's okay if he thinks that. I'd be more than happy to debate with him anytime on a live stream. Let's just not let it go on for four hours like your usual ones. No one wants to see that and I don't really have time. Weirdos? Maybe one day Richard will come to terms with just how much he and his rival have in common and how much he has transformed into Blaha over the years. Who knows, maybe they will eventually meet up for an MMA style fight and Richard will look across the cage at Blaha and think, hmm, we aren't so different. Mount Bicephius, jackass. Oh boy, this new vegan food I've been trying is lovely. You guys should really get into this stuff. Well, you know what, Jimmy? If the pillowcase on my head is so stupid to you, then why don't you, um, fight me in a cage? I've saved up enough money in my Peppa Pig piggy bank. Let's settle this in a ca- Oh my god, I've become a monster. Do you get it? Do you get the joke? Okay, good. See you all next time. Vagina.